tonight at six o'clock on the night that this is, you find yourself looking at a very rare vacuum cleaner, the Electrolux 185, the top of the line of the first generation of Slimline, the Slimline cleaners. This one is amazing, apart from it's in bits. It came to me in bits. It's still in bits. Part of the reason why I'm filming this video at all, frankly, is to get it back together so I can pick it up with one hand. So, crikey, let's, let's dive in. Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums this is on the comfy carpet today. How are you today? Yes, I got this very recently from a vacuum shop actually, BB Dyson Repair. In a town called Hull Beach near Spalding. Chat with them on Instagram. See my dad anyway, who lives in the next village along. And I had this and two other machines, but we'll concentrate on this, waiting for me. And yeah, I knew it was a part, you, you, you could tell really, really easily it was a part, but I have no idea why. I haven't got that far yet. This is the first thing that I'm doing. Immediately, I am seeing broken cables. I say broken cables, they're not broken. They've obviously caught the cord winder, but they seem okay. They run to this speed control knob. But I think they'll probably, they're not touching each other. They're not touching anything metal. And obviously, hopefully, we'll have it back together before we turn it on to see why the hell it was ever apart. Although, the motor housing hasn't been taken out, which is interesting and I think something that we should probably do just in case it's you know been part put back together but there's something amiss down there but we do have the cord rewind I can't imagine it's got it hasn't any tension in it at all because I can see the spring there but I'm not sure if it's supposed to be there or not we'll have a go but to all intents and purposes in my mind this is already scrapped and it sits on here and actually uses the same, exactly the same looking rings as the pneumatic do on the Henry, or any pneumatic with the Core V one. So that just clips on to there. And then the top cover goes on, which houses the locking spindle. That goes through the centre of the cord reel. looks rather like that ish oh no wait oh major cable catch I caught the cable on the back how have I done why have I done that uh, ah. was a little bit of movement, wasn't there? Let's stop messing about and wind it up and move on to the rest of the machine before we get going on the actuals. That'll do. So yeah, here we have, that's where the speed control would be from 200 to 800. The knob isn't on. On off switch, which would poke out, but this is non properly. And the cord rewind brake, which actually, and I've just found it, is a little flap that just nudges against the side of the wheel. So when you push it down, you nudge the flap away and the wheel spins. Very good indeed. Let's have a look under the bag door, which you may think is missing its bag full indicator, but it is not. It is in the there. 
although a fat lot of use it's going to be at the minute that just clips in there but I'm not going to do it because I think once I clip it in it's going to be a pain and we'll sit there so that's cool what's also in here and I was so pleased to find this I didn't find it straight away in fact it was already in here is how rare would that be to find the knob for the speed control which we can get on look at them look Ooh. so that is fantastic to have that knob which i'm going to take off now just because we'll put it back to 200 because i don't want to lose it and then we have a full a brand new bag literally never been used so that's good and then there's yeah, lots of dirt and detritus in here ah <gasps> Including two of the screws. Ta -da! Oh, the rest in here. Please let the rest be in here. The filter. Ooh. The filter is not. Oh, there's lots of big stones in there as well. The filter isn't the happiest in the world. But that's fine for now. There's lots of stones in that surround though. Hopefully the motor's okay. It doesn't smell burnt. It doesn't look burnt, you know. So I I hasten to guess that there was probably just a problem with the cord rewinder. And obviously they're in the vacuum repair shop. They they took it apart, and you know, the customer wouldn't have paid the bill, or it wasn't worth fixing, or there's something that we don't know about. You know, there's a lot of things it could be. Hopefully none that are. So to start with, when we go get a screwdriver, we're just going to whip this off to check that there's nothing nasty hiding oh, inside for us. Being an Electrolux, oh, move that light so it's not right on my head, we should only need a Phillips screwdriver. We'll take these out because I've got a feeling we'll need to pass some of them through. I mean, these screws haven't been touched, I don't think. There's those two. And then there'll be two back here. They're shorter. And then this will just lift off. Lots and lots of hair. But... I don't want to touch it too much. That is absolutely fine. Oh, it's basically a cylinder motor. The, the suppressor has blown. Ah, the suppressor's blown. Right, this changes a few things then. Blue, red, brown. Blue, red, brown. Remember that. So yes, we will. Oh, man. I hope it's just a suppressor. I really do. Please pull out. There we go. Um, this should just lift out. I've never had one of these in my adult life. We had a brown and cream electricity board special as our second vacuum when I was a kid. But that was many years ago. Look, it does let you know five hundred. I thought it was a five hundred mode. Look, it's still got the belt spindle on the back. Oh, excellent. Well done, Luton. Oh, so yeah, we won't go too far into the strip down of the motor. We'll let you know. I mean that sounds absolutely fine. What we need to do, yep, yeah, there it is, is remove that. Sodding Electrolux suppressor, and it's going to be fairly easy actually because oh, that's going to be very easy. One motor wire go through the suppressor and then joins on to the feed from wherever it was. I'm wondering if I can slip this below the solder line of. I'm going to do it below the solder line so I can basically just keep the entire 
terminal. That would be fab. I also don't want to really ruin this bracket because I can keep the bracket on. Yes, I can. Fantastic. Yeah, it's even fallen off of this metal bracket. That it, that metal bracket screwed into the top is supposed to go into the circle. Oh, they're horrible things, aren't they? Horrible, horrible things. Crikey, this could be like a really easy fix. So I'll pop that in there. We'll put this horrible thing back over it for now because it will at least make it sound nice. In fact, hang on. Both of the wires, the the red. Oh, right. Oh, that's fine. We just got to join the blue and the red together. The red will be the data, I think, from somewhere. No, the brown's the data. Red's the live. Brown's the data. Basically, just turns the voltage down. There'll be a big fat resistor in here <laughs> that will control all that. Right, I'm going to join these two together and we'll come back and see if it explodes. There we go. So I dropped the motor back in because it's a long old fat from all waste time. And we have our joined up data and neutral wire. And now we've got to connect that crimp to there and then very carefully connect this crimp to here and then flip the whole thing over oh there's little diffuser pads look that are falling out in front of me why it will get washed one you might get washed if you, if you go back on so I can test this machine out you might get washed you need to you know shut up and get back in there there we are. Two back ones have fallen out. Put the two front ones in. Oh, I'm a little bit excited now. Like I say, I, I almost didn't. I went there for something else, which you'll see a video of, or we have done. And this, and um, something else that you'll probably see a video of at some point, was sitting there. And I said, I just want it all for you know, what I was going to give for the hot point. Oh, I gave it away. I best put that out before this video. <laughs> so I did. I, I, I paid you know, a tenner for the lot, thinking that, you know... It would be a laugh, wouldn't it? Wasn't quite expecting this much of a potential. Obviously, we can plug it in and it explodes, so I best shut up and I put that down there. Right, so that's all the cables run. These two, well, if they short together, it's not the end of the world because they both carry power, but they won't. There's a few bits that are iffy, but it should be okay. I think we're now ready to try. And get this back on. Now, I don't know if I can just lower it down. No, it's going to be easier to do it the way we did before, which is that way. The problem is I can't pull the cable out to give me any more slack. some reason that cord reel isn't sitting square or going square I think it, I think the spring is knackered I think what's happening is this white part is needs to slot into there but there's a sodding spring and I hate them so much in fact it does hang on <laughs> of 
got to put the cable back on because you know what folks that white part that we've just taken off actually also holds this very same spring so if I can do a little bit of keyhole surgery perhaps In. I think it is. Cool. That's. Watch, ready? Oh, there's potential. Don't get excited, Sam. Don't get excited. Ah, oh, and that fits on as well. Right, before we go and pull anything, they are the two screws that I found. And I went into the shed and got the random box that has some screws like that in, although they're not actually that short, but you never know. I think they can be sort of thin. But let's try these two. They're actually from a Dyson, so we'll try Dyson screws. Because as long as they... Yeah, there we go. That fixed with two Dyson Torxes. Beautiful. Then we can put the actual. I'll put the black ones at the back because it's more visible. I can find the right screwdriver. This is. I'm very excited. Very excited indeed. Now. That's not quite so good though, but okay, right, so it's going to need a, just shortening. <gasps> okay, now the end won't go fully in, which is actually, you know, doable, I understand that. I'm going to have to really fess up with that core rewind, but oh my gosh, look at this. Ice cream time! Tell what time I do be filming, can't you? We'll put it on 400, and I know that. Oh gosh, I don't know if it's on or off. <gasps> oh well, I'm gonna leave my camera back in case it explodes, and we'll get it turned on. Here we go. Then let's plug the generic Livia plug in. 15 amps, <gasps> made in China. Whoa, quality. I don't know if it's on or off. Very excited. Whoa. Ah, right, okay, that's a pain in the bum. What about that, man? Oh, it doesn't work. This is dead, Jim. Ah. The fuse is dead, Jim. Probably quite a good job I had this in my hand then because we can nick its fuse. I know this works. What's this one? Yeah, 13 amps, that'll do. Yep, the multimeter works. Some slightly tatty wiring in that plug, but it'll be fine for now. Let's hope then that that fuse blew with the suppressor and not for an other reason. Oh, that cord group's really loose as well, I'll tighten that up. So yeah, it needs a bit of work, but I tell you what, I mean, to be honest, even if the motor is shot, I just need to find a 500 motor. That's easy enough. Right, I still don't know if it's on or off, so we shall just go straight for it. That's just blowing that fuse as well. Did you see that? 
jump on. I think there's something else wrong with it. I'm going to go investigating and I shall tell you what I find. I've worked it out and it's not great news. Because you see I I disconnected the red wire from both the light from the neutral, which is where it would have gone. Come on, focus. Because the only that's where it went, and that was the other side of the suppressor. Either way, I suddenly realised that I was pushing live and neutral together. So I disconnected that, turned it back on, and it coughed into life, and then stopped. So I dismantled it again, spent ages working out why. Can you tell? Hang on, let me stick the torch on. You'll like this. It's done it properly. Look, can you see there's no carbon brush, just a spring. The same on the other side. Yeah. That is not a happy com at all. So basically that motor is, in effect, scrap. So I had a look in the shed because I'm sure I have something. And I do. I have this. I have no idea where it came from at all. But we have it, it's basically a modern, a plastic version of that. In fact, we could even swap the fan covers round, which we're not going to. So assuming that it works, and now assuming that I know how to wire it up, we'll take off these, obviously in something else, though, because that's a very thin, look, we'll put it in there, which is where that sort of stuff lives. This should fit straight on it. And it almost does, except I just need to make that middle bit a bit wider because this obviously has a completely different... It was obviously four and upright, but we'll get away with it. I'll just snip out a couple of these. Haven't got to be deep on it. Just enough that it'll open it up by a square each, really. But yes, it, it did cough. If that motor had carbons in it, I think it would have run. But I haven't. I don't know if I killed the speed control. Because that red wire doesn't actually go to the speed control. So I'm not entirely sure what it's for. But it's for something. Oh, I need a knife now as well. I'll pause in a second. But this is going to take, you know, forever. I reckon, you know, it'll just burn it, it'll just sort itself out. Because it's only ever so lightly catching them. I reckon that by the time it's spun itself up, that'll fix itself. The rubber seal still fits the motor. And this only has two wires anyway. So the third red wire is a bit not important like I say it enters the circuit after the speed controller anyway it doesn't go anywhere near the speed controller I had to do this last time that the, the, the rubber gasket gets caught there we go put the back of the back of the pre-motor filter back in and then we'll sit the pre-motor filter itself back in and then, really, it's just a case of finding the screwdriver, popping off the existing... Well, I, I left a bit of cable on it, look, whatever it had, had a black cable. I'll fit these. Because I think, if it doesn't work, we have nothing, because that motor, not even new carbon brushes, We'll fix that motor. So this is basically the only chance we have sort of jelly rigging something completely random in, which I don't particularly want to do. I'm sorting it out. Right, I'm gonna screw it all back together and we'll give it another go. And this time I'll leave the camera running whilst we plug it in. And turn it on! Where it 
runs all right. Let's put the speed control knob back on. Oh, lots of dust, but nice cold air. Smelling a little bit carbony, I won't lie. What we do need to do, because obviously I haven't got the bag full indicator fitted, and I'm not going to because I don't want to take it straight off again, you know, when the V-firm happens. <laughs> Near the new motor. Oh, I have also forgotten to put this in, which is probably going to affect the sound somewhat. But I'm not taking it all apart again. Look at my hands. I want to wash them quickly. In fact, before I do that, we'll finish showing it off. Look, because here's the rating plate 1985, I think. Z185E. It is missing its front wheel, sadly, but by the looks of it, has been for some time so a motor we have a speed control i'm going to wash my well, i'm going to refit this wash my hands tidy up a bit and find some tools because I don't have any tools with this. This is all that I have. But it's alright. I've got a hose that will fit that. So bear with me, corner. And we are back. I have fitted the sound deadening back to the motor. I have oiled the top bearing in the motor. And I've actually done a fairly good job of retensioning the cable. Talking of which, this is what I pulled out. Of it look it's obviously the original because it had some nice crimps on it that's been that's been a hug off that cable that has and yeah we is now not too bad i have pinched at the time of filming this is september so i have pinched the tools from the 345 which is actually from the lineup way before this these this would have come out when the 345 ended Ish, but wouldn't have been a direct competitor. That would have been something else that I can't remember now. So, on 200 watts, we still have a fair bit of suction. It's a bit noisy at 800, but fantastic suction. Nonetheless, mm -hmm. I think this bus is stuck on half floor again. An actual slimline hose because I haven't ever slimline, which I haven't filmed yet. And I've got some spare dolphin poles, and I've got the flip over floor tool that I think these had. I know that our brown one had one in brown. I'm trying to put this down, so the same flip over floor tool that you got with the uprights with the 500. I've got one in the back of the shed somewhere. I'll fetch it out for the art of video and the piece de resistance. Ah! It's, it's, oh god, I'm sorry. Let's hold the plug, always hold the plug. 
it's a bit slow, but <laughs> well, I'm so, so happy. I mean, take that off now that we don't need the loss of suction. And that is one mighty fine, quite rare machine. So there we go, a proper fix it in this episode. This, obviously now I can pick it up. This is the only handle on it. So I can actually move it without it falling down everywhere. Yes, the Z185, obviously led a very hard life going by its motor. Now this is ready to be saved and we can stick it in the pile to be refurbished. So there we are really. I've taken up far too much of your time already so I shall bid you a thank you very much for watching and I shall see you soon and goodbye.